This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the publisher of Mac's List. It's an online community that connects talented professionals with meaningful work. I believe everyone can find a job they love, but to do this, you need to learn the skills to build a successful career. From professional networking to personal branding, you've got to get good at job hunting. This show helps you do this. Every week on Find Your Dream Job, I interview a different career expert. We discuss the tools and tactics you need to find the work you want. This week, I'm talking to Lakeisha Tomlin about how to turn down a job offer. Lakeisha Tomlin works with talented leaders in science, technology, and engineering. Her clients often receive multiple job offers. In our conversation today, Lakeisha encourages you to think about your personal needs before you say yes to any job offer, even if it's the only one on the table. Lakeisha tells me that you need to get the full value for your skills and experiences, and if the offer's salary and benefits don't meet your requirements, turn it down. But Lakeisha also advises you to say no with professionalism, and don't worry that rejecting a job offer hurts your prospects at a company. She says that no one tracks the number of offers you receive or how you respond. Want to learn more? Listen in now at the Maxlist Studio as I interview Lakeisha Tomlin about how to turn down a job offer. Lakeisha Tomlin is a career coach for talented leaders in science, technology, and engineering. She's also a mechanical engineer who has worked as a manager in the aviation and technology industries. Lakeisha's company, Thriving Ambition, helps clients improve employee engagement and retention, grow careers, and build five-star networks. Her work has been cited in Forbes, Self Magazine, and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. She joins us today from St. Louis, Missouri. Lakeisha, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Mac. Well, it's a pleasure, and... Our topic this week, uh, as you know, is how to turn down a job offer. Uh, This is something that is hard for a lot of people to do, isn't it, Lakeisha? Yeah, it is, uh, especially because, you know, the hiring manager and HR teams, they've spent a lot of time putting this offer package together and to tell them, Uh, Thanks, but no thanks is very difficult. Um, Any kind of bad news actually uh, is very difficult to deliver. Why do people sometimes feel pressure to say yes, even though they know it might not be the best offer? (laughs) Yeah, that's a, that's a common problem. And what I believe is that people don't want to generally disappoint others. Um, I, I don't, um, I don't fully know where that comes from, um, but I just remember as a kid, you know, being told, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. And it's unfortunate that people still um, approach job offers with the same mentality. Um, I believe that that saying should be caveated um, (laughs) with some extra things um, as far as if the opportunity is not good for you, then, hey, you should speak up. But, of course, people don't say that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, when people are, are getting, when they get an offer like Keisha and they're considering it, what kind of factors should they take into consideration uh, in making a decision that might, in fact, lead them to say no? What, what do you encourage your clients when you work with people to consider uh, before responding to a job offer? Um, For me and uh, the clients that I serve, um, the advice that I give is first, uh, what does your gut tell you? I'm a very intuitive person and this intuition uh, for me has come uh, with uh, age and experience. Um, So first of all, what is my gut telling me what to do? Because for me, 
my gut reaction is usually the most correct. And if I have a feeling that, you know, this opportunity is, it's great, but it's not fully what I'm looking for, or it's lacking a certain number of uh, predetermined uh things that would make me happy and, you know, want to do my best work in the position, then those are some of the key factors that I look at when considering a job offer. So one thing that I tell people to do is before you even go into an interview, write down what are some of those things in the job you want to uh, you want to look for you uh, and you want to have out of it. Because if you know what you want up front, then it's much easier for you to make a decision whether or not you want to accept or decline the offer when it's presented to you. When you work with your clients, Lakeisha, and they make those lists, do you see the same things come up again and again? Or are there a top five list of elements that most people hope to uh, get in a, in a job offer? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and of course, this list looks a little bit different uh, for everyone. But of course, the number one thing is salary. Everyone has this target uh, salary that they want to uh, get from this particular job offer. So salary is number one. Uh, for some people, it may be uh, the opportunity to have a flexible schedule, especially people that have uh, younger kids. They want to be able to do things uh, with them and there's daycare and a number other uh, and a number of things that go along with that. Um, another thing is some people don't want to uh, have to work weekends or don't want to travel. So uh, those are a couple of things that come up uh, consistently. But uh, like I mentioned before, salary is number one uh, for people. And oh, uh, health benefits, that's another one as well. Great health benefits for the family. That's a great list. Another one I see come up when I talk to job seekers uh, is commuting time. And Oh, yes. That's yeah. another great one, especially um, if you're in a big city such as uh, San Francisco or New York um, or just uh, any place with a lot of traffic like L.A., D.C. Yeah, all of those things have to be uh, taken into consideration. So you have that list. Uh, we touched on four or five items. Do you, what's the next step? Like you should, you get the offer. Do you attempt to negotiate before you say no, or does it just depend on, on every case? Um, so, so generally if it's a offer that you know in your heart and it, and based on this list that you created, that it doesn't meet, um, your criteria, I don't, um, I believe that if, okay, so it depends. I think for the most part, uh, if it's something that you're considering, like you like the job, but maybe the salary should be higher. And of your list of say five things, the salary piece is the only thing that is missing. I, I believe that it's worth your time to try to negotiate a higher salary uh, and know, you know, what your aspiration a uh, salary is so that would be the salary that um, that would be like your highest uh, dollar amount uh, that you would try to get and then there's also uh, your bottom line so that's the minimum amount that you would like to get in this uh, or for this particular job so knowing those numbers uh, going into even the interview um, is very helpful because it, it kind of gives you some sort of uh, targets to shoot for. So uh, going back to your question, whether or not they should turn it down if it doesn't initially meet their criteria or if it depends, the answer is definitely depends. Now, on the other side, if you have a list of five things and the job doesn't meet three or maybe even four because that has happened, of your um, criteria, then it's then it's a good use of your time and uh, everybody else's time. If you just go ahead and decline that offer, um, I, I don't I don't believe that it's worth the time and effort if it's a position that you're only just you know somewhat happy with. Um, if that makes sense, 
I just believe that you should make the best use of your time and not uh, waste it if the job is truly not a good fit. Okay, I, w- I want to talk about how to say no, but before we do that, I can imagine listeners are thinking, well, what would you say, Lakeisha, to people who might not be crazy about the job? It doesn't meet all your criteria, but it meets um, maybe three out of the five. And most importantly, you got to pay your bills. Uh, (laughs) How do you counsel people who are particularly folks who might have been unemployed for a while and, and the bills are mounting and they haven't had an offer before this? They don't know when the next one might come. How, how how do you see people manage that? Uh, typically in that situation, uh, people will just take the position. They'll say, okay, well, it doesn't meet, you know, five out of five or four out of five of my criteria, but it's at least more than 50%. And I don't know when I'm going to have another uh, job offer here. So let me go ahead and accept it, but they'll still be looking for other opportunities that, are a perfect fit for them. Because like you said, people have bills and they have a lot of other responsibilities that uh, require money. So if the money is, you know, in your lap and it's not a hundred percent or even 80%, just go ahead and take it, but be open to uh, looking for better opportunities. And do you think people should make when they say yes, particularly to a professional position, do you think they should make some kind of commitment before they pursue their next opportunity, say six, 12 months? Uh, what, what are your thoughts about that? Hmm. So I would say in that uh, situation, it really depends. So I've uh, heard of situations where this one guy, he got an offer for a position And he was only in the job for three weeks before he left and went to another company uh, with better, uh, better salary and in in a job, which is overall better. So for him, I would say in that, if it was that sort of situation, uh, you really have to be careful because uh, even uh, after talking to this hiring manager or the hiring manager for this guy, he was still mad about it. And this was, a year later. (laughs) And so uh, chances are this guy that left after three weeks won't uh, get a good recommendation from the hiring manager and he definitely will not be invited back, um, at least to this group, uh, because he left uh, only after being there for three weeks. So if if you don't want to burn bridges, I'd say give it Um, I try to give positions at least a year. And I know there are a lot of different situations that could happen where a year is not possible. Um, And at the same time, I don't believe that, you know, if your dream job pops up that you should just be like, oh, well, I planned on giving this particular job a year. Let me stay a year because that opportunity may not be there. So my overall message here is to use your best judgment when it comes to uh, pursuing different opportunities, especially if you're, uh, if you've just started a position and another great position comes along, uh, three months later, just make sure that, um, you do your best not to burn bridges. Uh, that's not always possible, but, uh, just leave the best way you can. If you decide to leave, uh, to pursue that better opportunity. Okay. It's good advice. That's a, it is a ticklish situation and it, it's a tough <laughs> one. Uh, but I, I really like your point about trying to avoid burning bridges because whatever field we all work in, it, they, it tends to be a small one. And doesn't <laughs> yes. Everybody knows everybody else. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I want to talk more about the, the how once you do make that decision uh, to turn down a job offer. So stay with us, and we'll be back in a moment. Have you ever looked at a job posting and said this to yourself? I could do that. Now, it's not your dream job, and it's not what you told people you want to do. It's not even what you do now. But you have some relevant experience. It sounds interesting. And yes, with a patient boss and lots of training, you could probably get the job done. So you apply. Usually you hear nothing back. Every now and then, however, you get an interview. 
But when you talk to the hiring manager, you struggle to explain why you want the job. And it's hard to show how this position fits into your career. You leave the interview room with a bad feeling. This happened to me early in my career. I applied for a lot of jobs I thought I could do. Because I'd prepared a few grant applications, I applied for full-time fundraising jobs. Because I'd prepared a few grant applications, I applied for fundraising jobs. Because I'd written some news releases, I applied for communications jobs. And because I'd helped edit a newsletter, I applied for editorial jobs. But I also didn't know if I wanted any of these gigs. And the employers who interviewed me could tell I wasn't clear about my career goals. Not surprisingly, I didn't get any offers. Here was my problem. I didn't have a job search goal. So after seven months of unemployment, I focused on figuring out my goal. And in less than two months, I had a job I loved. Before you send out your next application, get clear about your own goals. Stop chasing every lead. I've got a new resource that can help. It's called Finding Focus in Your Job Search. You can get your copy at maxlist.org slash focus. It's a free step-by-step guide, and it will help you figure out what you want in your career and in your next job. To get Finding Focus in Your Job Search, visit maxlist.org slash focus. Again, go to maxlist.org slash focus. And now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio, and I'm talking with Lakeisha Tomlin, the owner of Thriving Ambition. She's a career coach who works with leaders in science, technology, and engineering, and she joins us today from St. Louis, Missouri. Now, Lakeisha, before the break, uh, we were talking about the factors you should take into consideration when deciding not to accept a job offer. Let's talk about how you say no. Once you've make, made that choice, what, what's the next step? How do you communicate with uh, the people that you've been negotiating with? So once you've made that determination that, yeah, this job is completely not for me or whatever, you need to make sure that you plan that conversation that you're going to have uh, either with a recruiter or the hiring manager. Um, Planning for this is key. Um, And it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Basically, you just have to jot down, you know, the points that you want uh, to convey in this conversation, and then also anticipate what the other side may say, because this will help you come up with different um, answers uh, just in case, so that way you're not caught off guard. So planning is number one in this case for turning down a job offer. What kinds of questions should listeners think about that uh, the hiring manager or the recruiter might have that they should be prepared to answer? Well, the first question would be uh, something like, what motivated your decision to turn down this job offer? And you have to have an answer prepared for that. Um, it could be, you know, whatever whatever the criteria that you created pre-interview, like uh, maybe commute time or the uh, salary or benefits or something like that. You don't have to give them an in-depth Um, explanation as to what your reasons are for turning it down, but they would like to know something. So I would suggest that people share as much as they're comfortable with and just know that they're not obligated to tell everything uh, when it comes to turning down this job offer. Are there there things that people shouldn't say, um, reasons that might matter to the job seeker, but if shared with an employer might be annoying or, or perhaps hurt the job seeker's reputation? Um, I don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that they shouldn't say. I believe that the overall uh, goal in this should just be to be professional and just uh, basically put yourself in that hiring manager or that HR person's shoes. You know, how would you want someone to break the news to you? I think if you keep that frame of mind, it really helps you uh, plan your conversation uh, to be uh, as professional as possible. So that way you don't 
burn bridges with that company because you just never know, you know, if in a better opportunity pops up at the company and you're interested in it, um, you, you want to make sure that you're a contender for that cool position. So professionalism in this case is key. And how do you recommend people deliver the message? Should it be done in person, by Skype, by telephone or email? What, what's most effective? I believe that in person is best, but of course that's not always possible. Um, I think that just giving a simple phone call would be a good way of breaking the news to the hiring manager or the recruiter. I personally use that method and it's been fine. Sometimes the person is not able to jump on the telephone. Then that's when you would resort to email. But I feel that email should be the last resort after you've tried to uh, talk to the person face to face or get them on the telephone or even Skype. Uh, it, it, some companies use Skype or FaceTime to conduct interviews. So if neither of those are options, then email would be a last resort. Any common mistakes you see job seekers make when delivering this this message of no that people should be aware of? Um, the common mistake that I see is just lack of professionalism uh, where someone will brag about, say if they have another offer, they would brag about how much more this other company is paying them for the same job or whatever. So I, like I said before, it's not necessary for you to give all of the details about why you're turning down this offer. Just let them know that, hey, I'm turning this down. You can share as much information as possible, but always keep it professional. So uh, any boasting like that should definitely be excluded from those conversations. And do you recommend people stay in touch with hiring managers, uh, uh, particularly if they've been in the field for a while? Oh, most definitely. I believe that um, connections are everything or relationships are everything. So I believe that it is very important for you, even after you've delivered this bad news, to ask the person that you're talking to, whether it's the hiring manager or the recruiter, if you could keep in contact with them, if there are other opportunities that are a better fit for you uh, at that company or in that organization. I can imagine for many listeners, that's an important point if they're, they want to work in a very large organization because it may be this opportunity doesn't work, isn't right for them at one division, but they remain very interested in, in finding another opportunity at that company. Exactly. And then sometimes it's just timing where um, the opportunity may not be a good fit for you. Uh, maybe there's a lot of things that are happening in your personal life and the position requires you to work a lot of hours or travel a lot, uh, either domestically or internationally. And maybe you have little kids and you don't want to leave them at home. I mean, there are just all types of situations. And speaking of large companies, I know some people may think I should say yes to this offer, even though it's not the best one for me professionally, because I want to get my foot in the door at this organization. What would you say to people who are, are thinking that, Lakeisha? Yeah, that's, that's often uh, very common. And you will hear uh, recruiters and hiring managers say, well, this would be a good position for you to get your foot in the door. Uh, we tend to promote from within. And depending on the organization, that may be true or that may not be fully true, um, especially if it's an organization that you're familiar with. Maybe you have friends or family at the organization and they could give you the inside scoop on what's happening. So I believe that it really just depends on the situation um, that you're in. Uh, if it's a, like I said earlier, if it's a job where it doesn't check all the boxes, but a majority, a majority of them are checked, it may be a good opportunity for you. And the key is to make sure that the role will help you build new skills because the more skills you build, the more marketable you will be uh, for a, either a promotion internal to the company or a promotion at some other company. Well, speaking of opportunities or multiple opportunities at a company, 
I tweeted earlier today about the uh, the fact that you and I would be talking and asked if uh, my Twitter followers had any questions for you. And I got a reply from Dave Watts, who's the host of the Redundancy Podcast in the United Kingdom. And here's his question, Lakeisha. He writes, I've been unemployed for 10 months since being made redundant. I have an interview on Monday. We're recording this on a Wednesday for a role that pays 45% less than my last job. I have another interview, same organization, seven days later for a job paying 20% less, but one I'd prefer. What should I do if the company offers me the job on Monday? What's your advice there, Lakeisha? Hmm. Wow, that's an interesting uh, problem to have. Um, from what it sounds like, is that uh, he wants to decline the position that is 45% less. And I would say to him, you know, if it's truly not a good fit for him and his situation, that he should definitely decline it and make sure that when he does decline it, that he's being as professional as possible and that he asked to stay in touch with the people that he's communicating with in case there's a better opportunity at that company for him to, um, to interview for. So uh, that would be my advice uh, to him. Okay, terrific. And I would add it, it's hard to tell from a tweet, but it <laughs> sound, sounds as if to, he might say yes to the first opportunity if the second one doesn't come through, in which case, um, you know, that's a different conversation, but it, 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 <laughs> yes. is, a t it is a tough one. Uh, those are good tips. Well, Lakeisha, it's been a great conversation. Now tell us what's next for you. Uh, the next thing for me is uh, basically uh, providing more content at my website, thrivingambition.com. And I am hosting a course on building relationships. Basically, it's how you land your dream job through building connections, mutually beneficial professional connections. And I'm hosting uh, this this fall and then also in early 2019. So um, it, it'll be a very interactive class for people to ask questions and learn how to uh, search for their dream job without using job boards and through collect uh, connections that they have or build new ones. Well, I had a chance to look at your website before our interview, and you have some material there about this course. It, it looks like it's going to be a great class. I know people yes. can find out more about it by visiting your website, and that URL is thrivingambition.com slash network. Well, We'll be sure to include that in the show notes as well. And Lakeisha, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Mac. This was a really great uh, opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Take care. There were two big takeaways for me from my conversation with Lakeisha. The first it's important to know what you want. She talked about having a list of criteria for considering a job offer. At whatever point you are in your job search, you need to know what your goals are. And by doing so, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. You'll also be able to make the best decisions for you professionally. The second big takeaway was the importance of not burning bridges. Whatever fields we work in, we're going to keep running across the same people again and again and again. So keep that in mind in all your relationships and all your professional dealings, but especially when you say no to a job offer. You want your search and your career to be as easy as possible. Here's another way to make your job next job search easy. Get my new resource, Finding Focus in Your Job Search. It'll help you put together not only your job search goals, but help you think through that criteria that you need when considering a job offer. It's on our website. Again, the title is Finding Focus in Your Job Search, and it's free. Go to maxlist.org slash focus. Again, that's maxlist.org slash focus. Well, thank you for listening to today's episode of Find Your Dream Job. And join us next Wednesday 
when our guest expert will be Sorilda Summers McGee. She's the Chief Human Resources Officer at the City of Portland. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job.